we were talking about Horner syndrome, its anatomy and uh, its presentation depending on the location of the lesion. To understand Horner syndrome, we need to know that there are three orders of neuron contributing uh, to the sympathetic nervous system of the head and neck. Uh, the first order neuron starts in the hypothalamus and uh, the uh, neurons will travel through the lateral aspect of the brainstem all the way down to the spinal cord at the level of the lower C spine around C8 to about T2, so upper thoracic spine. And over there, we're gonna have our first synapse. So the first order neuron or the central neuron, uh, imagine if there is a lesion uh, such as uh, a stroke causing lateral medullary syndrome, the first order neuron or the central neuron will be affected. Uh, this uh, area, uh, the C8 to T1, where the synapse for the first order neuron is happening, uh, the name of uh, this area is the ciliospinal center of budge. And then from here, uh, we can look at the second order neuron, uh, which is also called the preganglionic neuron. And uh, so the neurons will separate from the spinal cord they will travel, travel along the lung or the apices of the lung um, over the mediastinum and underneath the subclavian artery. And then they will run up, they will go up, and they will uh, form their second synapse here at the level of the superior cervical ganglion. So the second order of neuron or the pre-ganglionic uh, neuron, if there is a lesion of the, for example, if there is a pancos tumor, tumor or if there is a lesion in the upper lungs, uh, that can affect the second order of uh, neuron. Also, uh, trauma to areas um, in the lower neck or the medial neck uh, can cause that as well. Uh, and so the second synapse and then the third order of neuron or the postganglionic neuron will arise from this location. Uh, we're going to have two branches. The first branch will travel alongside the external carotid artery and it will go to the face and that's the pathway that controls the hydrosis or in Horner syndrome anhydrosis, inability to sweat. Uh, the other branch will travel along the internal carotid artery and uh, will go up into the skull, uh, into the cavernous area, again along the ICA, and then uh, uh, it will separate and will travel to its destination alongside the V1 branch of the trigeminal nerve. Um, and so just imagine if a patient has a dissection of the carotid artery or the internal carotid artery at this level, uh, the patient will present. Uh, the patient will present with meiosis and ptosis, Horner type of ptosis, uh, which involves typically both upper and lower eyelid. The upper eyelid will go down, the lower eyelid will go up. And but as you see, it's not if it's not going to affect this uh, sweating of the ipsilateral face. So there's not going to be an anhydrosis if there is a lesion at this side. Uh, so just to review quickly, uh, first order neuron or the central neuron, uh, 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 it will uh, synapse at the level of the lower cervical. Um, uh, spine or the upper thoracic spine at the level of the ciliospinal center of butch. The second order neuron or the preganglionic neuron uh, will uh, travel in the neck going up to the uh, superior cervical ganglion, second synapse there, and then eventually we will have the branches that can cause anhydrosis if affected. 
uh, proximally and the branches that can cause um, meiosis and ptosis uh, of the eye and the orbit.